Okay, so let's get to sculpting him. Um, sculpting in the basic details. So I'm going to use my grab brush and bring in his cheeks some here. Oh, sorry, I need to um, turn back on the symmetry. Bring his grab brush and bring in his front of his cheeks here and his head back here. I'm going to keep the height of his head pretty similar. And we want to bring out the front some for the collarbone area and bring this in for the spine area and round things out along the shoulder. Of course we'll use the smooth tool to smooth this down some. And we really can't do that much yet until we add another level of subdivision. But we can get the basics down which are really important. So we're thinning up the neck here some. This is going to be a very hungry zombie because, you know, full zombies aren't that scary. We want this zombie to be very scary. We want you to think that he's going to eat your little kitten and that is horrific. We want to um, move in the bottom here some. Can't really see what I'm doing very well. But we do want a dip in here some, not too much of a dip, um, which we have right now. But um, just somewhat of a dip. And then we're going to use the hit S to get back to the smoothing tool and smooth this off some. Hit G to go back to grab and bring that in again because we really do want that in. And use the G. Well, we're already using the grab tool, but use the grab tool to um, keep adjusting things. Thinning out the face and the head until we get closer to the type of face we're trying to achieve here. Don't worry too much about the overall composition at this point because we're going to keep working on it as we go along. But this is a very good start. All right. So next, we're going to be adding in the basic details. Okay. So I'm going to go over and um, hit subdivide. We're going to add another level of subdivision, and we're just going to start adding some more um, adjustments to this um, overall shape of the head. Bring this in some. We do want this to stick out a little bit more from the front of the face so that we get a bit of a chin, but we do want this to come in also so we still get a chin. I'm using the grab tool a lot because um, it's enabling, enabling me to do a lot of meager adjustments without having to do a lot of um, adding and subtracting. I can just move stuff around. The thing you want to be careful with though with sculpting with the grab brush is it's easy to stretch things like the mouth bringing down the chin you can lose a lot of detail and it makes it harder later on if you want to do anything really detailed like adding teeth so just keep that in mind when you're grabbing things um, so that's about good enough for now smooth that out some and next um, we're going to add in a nose, okay? So let's go over to, let's just use the brush tool. Go ahead and hit F to size it down some. And you can start adding in the basic idea of a nose. We're really too little of detail now still, but we can, we can try to get a little bit of detail in here. We're going to have the ear right about here, okay? And once again, we're really way too low in detail, so I'm going to add another level of subdivision. Now we can start working with stuff. I'm adding in the ear here, which will um, be a large part of the project later on as we try to get a very realistic ear to help pull off the overall illusion of a zombie head. And um, adding the bridge of the nose and the eyebrows right now, just by using the brush tool with add. And if you hit shift F, you can change the intensity of the brush. So I'm going to make it a little bit more intense and add in some more eye, brow, definition, work on the nose some. And as you can see, we're not working off of any reference. I'm going to hit subtract and subtract a little bit there. And the reason I note that is, um, well, anyhow, we're not working on any reference. So that means that we're not looking at a picture. We're not... Um, 
referencing anything to make it look exact. This is all coming from my head. So um, if it doesn't look quite right, then you know, just blame my memory of anatomy. Um, but um, it's all very proximate anyway, since this isn't that realistic of a model. It's a zombie head. I mean, it's not a human. So anymore. So I want to turn down the intensity of the brush and um, add some more definition there. Turn it down with by hitting F. You can size the brush. Hit F to make it a bit smaller. Add in some mouth detail. I really can't do much with the mouth yet because we're still too low of a subdivision level. We want to add some cheek line there. Turn our brush up a bit bigger and add in some chin detail. All right, so then we're going to hit subtract, make the cheeks a bit more hollow. And um, so without a reference, it's all coming from um, the head and you're going to get perhaps a less realistic model since you're not using a reference but it gives you a lot of freedom and um, then you can't blame me at the end by um, not making it look exact since um, it's all out of creativity. So that's the base of the head and we're going to make a little bit of a dip there. Mostly we're going to leave the ear alone for the moment. We're going to work more in the face and then we're going to get to the ear a little bit later. But once again, we need another level of subdivision pretty soon. I'm going to add and add some neck muscle detail going on. Adam's apple. And then we want some um, neck muscles to come down here. It's too big. Turn the brush down and have it kind of come around right here. Okay. So we're going to use subtract and subtract a little bit of detail there. Subtract a little bit along the back of the head. Turn it down a little bit and subtract it in to get that uh, look there. And then, very importantly, we this is very important. We want to add in the collarbone, but we don't have enough detail yet. So I'm going to add another subdivision level. And as you can see, we're going past the levels of subdivision very quickly. Um, but as you go up, the limit we're going to go to is a level of five because that's about all my computer can handle well. Um, so bring this up. This is actually the family's computer, but uh, I use it a lot so because it's more powerful um, than our old computer. So sculpting is intensive on the computer, but um, it allows you to get a lot more detail, a lot more naturally than than um, just doing poly by poly sculpting or even box modeling. And um, you can use sculpting to whatever degree you want to use it. Um, for instance, you don't have to sculpt an entire head like this. You could just use sculpting tools to make minor adjustments to your already, already modeled face. And um, that's a very good way to use sculpting. But for this, we want to I want to show you how to go from start to finish on making a very detailed head. So I'm going to smooth this down a little bit and um, go to this tool and add a little bit more of that muscle detail going on. Lighten it up with Shift F. And that's about good enough for now. Okay. All right, so it doesn't look too realistic yet, but um, we'll work on that as we go along. And I'm sorry if my anatomy's off. Um, <laughs> we all have areas where we can improve. We want to add a little bit more um, of a pit in the eyes. Um, turn the intensity up. And we do want to make the zombie look kind of sad because he's lost all chance of a good life because, um, you know, he's turned into a zombie. So subtract that sum under the chin. And the next thing we want to do is add in some eye meshes. As you can see, when I went of edit mode from sculpt mode to edit mode, it went all the way back down to um, 
where we started off with the applied multi um, subsurf modifier. So in sculpting, it's set to three, and it does matter in sculpting um, what level you're on because you're actually editing that level in sculpting. Render is um, for when you render it. If you have want to render at a lower resolution to um, not crash your computer or your um, version of Blender, then you can turn rendering down. And sculpt um, the preview resolution allows you to see um, to edit it in the object mode at different resolutions. So we're going to do it at this resolution since it's not very big yet. Um, right click on your mesh, then hit Shift S, and then cursor to select it. Right now we're working on adding the eyeballs. Okay, we're using it as a separate object because I'm not going to be editing the eyeballs at all. Now we're going to hit Shift A, and then UV sphere. So we hit tab to go into edit mode and scale it down with S. Then we're going to bring it over here, about there, size it up a little bit. Then we're going to hit numpad, numpad 3 to go into side view. And then hit R, and then negative 90. Okay? So that gets the front of the eye facing out. So we want it right about there. And next, we go over to the modifiers and add a mirror modifier. And we just line it up to whatever we think the eyes um, should look like. So let me see. Not quite. Move it over a little bit. And I'm going to move them out just a little bit again. OK. So that'll be about good enough for our eyes. We want to move them forward a little bit and make them a bit bigger. And we want to move them out a little bit, sorry. All right, so that's about good. Then we right click on the eyes and smooth them, just like the rest of the mesh. Um, right away, I'm going to add a subsurf modifier because um, once we actually get to rendering it, we're going to want to have a subsurf on it. So, all right, and next we're going to go back to our main mesh and start adding another level of detail and sculpting in some more detail.